Hey YouTube, it's Brendan here answering a question that I often get from students. What is a double zero? So you may find this in your algebra two or pre-calc course, and it's also something that you may see on the SAT or ACT. And all a double zero is, remember zero is a solution. It's a value of x that makes uh, the equation true when y is equal to zero. And a double zero is a value that kind of does that twice. So the easiest way to show you this is an example. Let's say we have the function f of x is equal to x minus 2 times x plus 4 times x minus 3 times x plus 4. So if we want to pick out which one of these is a double zero, we just have to look at the one that appears twice. In this case, that's going to be x plus 4 times x plus 4. Now, you probably also know that anything multiplied by itself can just be written as that value or that quantity squared. So rather than seeing it presented the way you do in the top equation, you're more likely to see it in this form in red. And what we could say here is that x plus 4 uh, is a factor that leads us to a double zero at negative 4. So here we could say that our zeros are going to be at the point two zero, right? I get that if I set this equal to zero, we would have a double zero at the point negative four zero. If I set this factor equal to zero and subtract four from both sides, so I'm going to say that this is a double zero. And then x minus three would lead us to a zero at the point three comma zero. Now, sometimes, instead of uh, saying um, that something's a, a double zero or a zero, um, you may describe it as a zero with a certain multiplicity. So, for example, this first one, which has its zero at two comma zero, we would say that it has a multiplicity of one. This double zero, we would say, is something with a multiplicity of two. And this last one, we would say, is something with a multiplicity of one. Now, what do double zeros look like graphically? Well, if we had to graph a double zero, let's say we go ahead and we set up this axis right here, a double zero is going to be a place where it bounces off of the x-axis. So let's say we had maybe this function. I'm not going to draw the y scale in, but let's say we had something that came up like this, hit that mark, and then went down and then came up through here. It looks something like that. So what we can see is at this point right here, this point, we can see that our graph is bouncing off of the x-axis, and that's characteristic of a double zero. So right here at the point negative 2 comma 0, we would say we have a double zero, whereas over here at the point three comma zero, we would say that we have a single zero. Now, if I have a double zero at negative two, my factor is always going to be x minus whatever the x coordinate of the zero is. So for the point on the left here, it's going to be x minus negative two, which is going to lead us to x plus two. Now, since it's a double zero, I'm going to go ahead and square this. For the point 3 comma 0 that's on the right side, I know that this is going to be x minus 3. And I'm going to assume that it's a single zero. So it's just going to have a multiplicity of 1, which I therefore don't need to write. So we could say that this function is described by x plus 2 squared times x minus 3. Now, there's also something we have to put in the front. This is called a constant, and I'm just going to write it as a for now. We're not going to worry too much about a in this video. I'll discuss in a later video. So let's try another one of these. Let's say maybe we wanted to look at, um, let's go down here, and let's say we wanted to look at another graph. And on this graph, we again you know, drew this in. I'm not going to worry about the y-axis. That's not too important. Assume these tick marks are by ones. And let's say it looked like this. So let's say it came up here. Let's say maybe bounces off of that. 
say it comes up here, it's going to have to go through the origin, and then maybe it comes down here, and it bounces off of that point. So we're going to consider this, this, and this to be my zeros. So if we label each of these points, we could see that this is the point negative 4, 0, this is the point 0, 0, and this is the point 3, 0. Now for each of those zeros, what would the factors be? Well, if x minus, if negative 4 was the 0, then that would lead us to a factor of x plus 4. Now here we see that it's bouncing off of the x-axis. So since it's bouncing off of the x-axis, we're going to treat that as a double zero. So it's going to be squared. What about here? What about when it goes through x equals uh, the, the, the point zero, zero? Well, we would have to do x minus zero, but that's just x, right? So there's, there's no point in writing that. So I'm just going to write uh, times x. There's no need to put the zero. And then what about this point right here? Well, if it's happens where x is 3, that means that our factor could be x minus 3. And once again here, we see that it is bouncing off of the axis. So we're going to go ahead and square that. And then we're going to, on this side, we can see that f of x is equal to this whole thing. So I hope that clears a lot of things up as far as what a double zero is, what it looks like both algebraically when the equation's written out and also graphically when it's written here. Uh, we also talked a little bit about how you can look at a, a graph and decide what the factors need to be as well as their, their appropriate multiplicity. Hope you found this video helpful. Good luck studying.